The only object we can live on is our own planet, the Earth. But if we needed to move and live elsewhere, where would we go? The most obvious answer is Mars, of course, but if we wanted to go farther, there are indeed other more interesting options available to us. Today, I'll be discussing one of the more exotic places in our solar system that could perhaps be a habitable spot for us in the very far future. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the C Squared channel. Living on other planets has been a point of interest for many decades. With recent planned missions to send people to Mars, there has been a lot of talk about setting up a civilization and live there in the future. But the topic of living on Mars has been done to death by a lot of other people. So I want to explore another interesting option in our solar system that could potentially be another hotspot for society. That would be Titan, one of Saturn's 82 moons in its planetary system. Titan stands out from a lot of other moons and objects in the solar system for having rather unusual properties and interesting conditions that make it extremely unique for our survival. Of course, this is a lot more far-fetched than Mars right now, but the option is still worth taking a look at. So what do I mean by unusual properties and interesting conditions? Well, we need to take a look at Titan as a whole. So Titan is roughly 40% smaller than the Earth, but it is the second largest satellite in the entire solar system, just behind Ganymede, a moon of Jupiter. It is peculiar because it is the only moon to have a very dense atmosphere. Even more interestingly, it is the only other known object in the solar system to have some kind of stable liquid on its surface. Now, why is this relevant to the topic of this video? Well, besides the fact that I found those facts to be pretty cool myself, they could actually be quite useful should we ever need to find a new place to live on. That isn't Mars, of course. So about that atmosphere, 95% of it is made up of nitrogen, with the other 5% being methane. You can also find trace amounts of hydrogen, although this contributes to a really small amount of only about 0.099%. From some flyby missions of past Titan, like Voyager 1 and Cassini Hygens, an estimate of the atmospheric pressure was determined to be about 1.5 Earth atmospheres. That means Titan's atmosphere is 50% thicker than Earth's on average. Now, if we look at some of the simple thermodynamics processes here, if you have an atmospheric pressure like this and you combine it with the average surface temperature of Titan, which is about minus 179.15 degrees Celsius, we will find something called the triple point for methane. In general, the triple point is a region where solid, gas, and liquid can all coexist together. In the case of methane, Titan's conditions allow for a very unique situation. What we get is gaseous methane in the atmosphere, but you will also get liquid methane on the surface as well. You can think of this like how we have solid ice on the Earth but we also have oceans made of liquid water on the surface, and we have gaseous water vapor in our atmosphere. This phenomenon makes Titan to be the only other object in the entire solar system where stable liquid is found covering some of its surface. So now we've established some of the cool aspects of Titan. What does this mean for a potential civilization there? Well, if we're not bothering about Mars, I would say this is perhaps the next best place to go in the solar system. One of the main positives of Titan is that because the atmosphere is so thick, we won't need to worry too much about wearing any kind of pressurized suits or any of that. Although of course there is a lack of oxygen, so we would need to have oxygen masks and some way to harvest oxygen from Titan itself in order for our bodies and society to function normally. How that can be done would be quite a challenge and not really something people have looked too far into yet, but the possibility is pretty damn cool I'd say. What we have been doing lately is preparing to send missions to Titan to scan its surface in more detail and determine its habitab habitab habitability. <laughs> there we go. Should we ever need to go to another place besides Mars? Upon digging around for a little while, one mission in particular that struck out as quite interesting to me is the Dragonfly mission. This is a rather recent development with first plans being drawn up in 2017 with it being part of a new program revealed in 2019 called New Frontiers. 
If everything goes to plan, Dragonfly will launch in 2026 to 27 and land on Titan in 2034 to 36. The concept of the mission is rather simple. A spacecraft carrying the probe will travel all the way to Titan. The probe will land on the surface and then it will begin to travel across it, taking information about the chemical makeup of Titan. As it does this, the probe will be looking for key chemicals, molecules, and other conditions that could be termed as prebiotic. Now, prebiotic means an error that contains the building blocks of life before it develops. So essentially, you can think about it as the conditions of the Earth just before we had microbe life, which eventually led up to us, for example. What the probe will be able to find by doing this is anyone's guess, of course, but it'll certainly be exciting for everyone involved in the project. Although we'll need to wait another 15 years or so before we can get to that point, so <laughs> let's hope the wait will be worth it. Now, not only Dragonfly will be looking for prebiotic conditions in Titan, but as a secondary feature, it will also be looking at the potential for habitability, meaning if we would be able to live there or not and sustain ourselves. According to NASA's Massive Assessments of Major Projects document released in April 2020, Dragonfly will allow us to use information about prebiotic conditions to see if they can be used in our favor should we ever want to try and live on Titan. For example, the area Dragonfly will land on is planned to be in a rather dark region of Titan named Shangri-La. So craters in this area are expected to host some kind of water ice, which has been explored in much older missions. This time around though, Dragonfly will have a number of technical improvements for chemical analysis, and so it will be able to look into these bodies of ice in much greater detail than ever before. If such bodies of ice are confirmed to be very widespread across the moon, then this can be great news for habitability, since it means we could perhaps extract liquid water and oxygen from these regions, which obviously, as we all know, are very essential for our survival. Dragonfly will also be looking at the atmospheric properties, and perhaps we could get interesting information about how the weather works, and how the geology of Titan works too. These are fairly important since it's good to know if Titan has a lot of dangerous weather cycles or immense geological activity, but first all fairly tame and not much of a threat, which should be great news for us. In older missions like Voyager 1, it was discovered that Titan very rarely undergoes any sort of cyclone activity or crazy weather systems like massive storms you'd find on Saturn or Jupiter or any of that, meaning the weather environment is very peaceful. The most activity you get is some thunderstorms, and according to NASA astrobiologist Chris McKay, these thunderstorms would be pretty similar to the Texas thunderstorm season you find over in the United States. As far as geological activity goes, there doesn't seem to be too much research into it yet from what I've found, but it's suspected that you wouldn't expect to find any sort of quakes or volcanic activity or anything like that, although I imagine Dragonfly would be looking more into this when the time comes. If we would be able to achieve living on Titan, then we can only imagine what bases, society, and civilization as a whole would look like on this moon. There's been quite a bit of cool artist impressions all over the internet, and it really excites me to see what future progress we'll make on potentially living on other objects in our solar system, well beyond the scope of Mars. And I hope it'll excite you guys too. So that's all I had to say for this video, thank you all so much for watching, Please subscribe if you haven't, share this video around to help the channel grow, and I'll see you all in the next one.